This kind of hurt photo. It hurts a person when somebody does you wrong. She was scammed out of almost $12,000 over some housework. It just wasn't called for. I mean, totally uncalled for. I mean, it's the lady works hard like everyone else, I imagine, just to give her money away. Tonight, gracious Denver 7 viewers are stepping in to get the job done. Plus, changes are coming to a small Colorado town. I've been here in Windsor for 26 years, so I've seen it from 2,000 people all the way up to 32,000 people. The development moving in that could shift the town's parking plan. And a 360 debate on whether DIA really deserves to be called the best airport in the nation. Denver 7 starts right now. Contact 7's getting results for a woman who wrote a large check to contractors only to have them take her money and disappear. Tonight, a contractor who saw our initial story last week stepped up to help, and Denver 7's Tom Mustin was there as the man made good on his promise. Hi. Hello, Pam. Hi. How are you doing? Okay. I'm Marty. I was just a senior clipping on Channel 7 News. Marty Herrera arrived at Pam Ruffin's Westminster home, hoping to help out a complete stranger. Well, I'd just seen it on the news. I just thought maybe that, I mean, the lady can probably use a hand. Okay. Last week, we told you how the 72-year-old woman had written a check for nearly $12,000 to two shady contractors to fix her fence. The men said they were from the Eagle Eye Fencing Company. They gave her two company t-shirts, then disappeared. Marty says, our story struck a nerve. I was watching myself and said, hey, I can probably give the lady a hand and with labor-wise. I mean, to help her tear down, tear out, and start setting poles back up for her. Marty's a contractor who owns All About Painting. It's a coward move. I mean, there's so many people out there struggling and hurting, and for somebody just to run off with the check and not come back. He agreed to tear down the old fence and put up a new one with no charge for labor. We've reached out to Home Depot to try and get a discount on parts. Marty says helping out is simply the right thing to do. Totally uncalled for. I mean, it's the lady works hard like everyone else, I imagine, just to give her money away. We would come out here and give it 100 percent, I mean, whatever we can do to help. And after a painful $12,000 lesson, Pam says she and her dogs are grateful to Marty Herrera for restoring her faith in humanity. To remove the fence and then to put it back up would be a, it's a miracle. Probably thousands of people watch the show and one person comes and says he'd like to help. I think it's a wonderful thing, you know, so thank you so much. You're welcome. Tom Mustin, Denver 7. You're a good man, Marty. Thanks for doing that. And tonight, we're still working to learn more about the conditions of the three oil and gas contractors hurt in a fire today at the northern Colorado facility. Three men were working on this compressor when this flash fire happened. They are being treated for burns tonight. It happened at the Summit Midstream Hereford plant in northern Weld County. This is near the Wyoming border, and OSHA is now investigating. Colorado is wishing Congressman Ken Buck well after chest pains sent him to the hospital in Washington, D.C. today. Buck, who represents Eastern Colorado, was attending the congressional baseball practice when it happened. He was rushed to the hospital to get checked out, and fellow members of the House Freedom Caucus report that he is in good spirits. We are working to find out if Buck is still in the hospital and how serious his condition is. Buck was diagnosed with lymphoma in the past and went into remission in 2013. Well, even though the election won't be certified until June 13th, Paul Lopez is claiming victory as the new Denver clerk and recorder over challenger Peg Pearl. It's a close, close race. Latest numbers show both of them, Paul Lopez and Peg Pearl, at 50%. The elections office is still waiting for additional ballots, including those from service members overseas. So when the election is certified next week, we'll have a better idea if there will be a recount here. Now, Lopez released a victory statement tonight thanking supporters, but also writes, the vote margin in this race will likely trigger an automatic recount. He says we will respect the process and ensure that every vote is counted and every voice is heard. And in the race for Denver City Council for the first time in recent memory, three incumbents lost their seats and three Latinas won seats. One of the biggest upsets was in District 9. Neighborhood activist Candy Cedevaca unseated incumbent Albus Brooks. Cedevaca grew up in District 9, which includes Elyria Swansea. She's most well known for fighting against the I-70 expansion project. She won by more than 700 votes. Her campaign says voters sent a strong message. Voters said without hesitation that we want a city that represents all of us. Now, we asked to speak with Sidebaka, but we are told she is taking a rest until next week. The University of Denver is facing yet another lawsuit from one of its law professors for unfair pay allegations. This is part of a settlement from a similar wage gap lawsuit last year that our university posted all faculty salaries. And that is how Rashmi Gwell says she found out she's being paid thousands less for her uh, than her male and non-Asian colleagues. 
So she's suing the university for back pay and benefits, as well as for a pay hike. Now, DU says it has been working with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission to ensure a fair and equitable compensation. Tonight, a small Colorado town is making way for development, and in the process, they're moving the places where people park. Now, long time business owners have their concerns. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez went to Windsor to learn. As traffic on Windsor's Main Street bustles, inside of Memory Lane Antiques, Dan Stout looks to the future. It's just common sense. And get people to come in from outside of downtown. For 26 years, Stouse has owned this antique store. And for 26 years, I'm waiting for Windsor to turn the corner and to get some great economic development and some exciting businesses coming downtown so we don't have the leakage of our customers and our citizens going to Fort Collins, going to Loveland and spending their tax dollars here. Also a part of the downtown development authority, Stouse's wish may become a reality. The town is planning to develop land behind the strip of its stores on Main Street that include commercial, retail and residential spaces as shown by these renderings. The town says all these parking spots behind me are going to be shifted to a lot just down the block. For some though, it's a bigger issue. I work at Manweiler Appliances. It's in the middle of the 400 block here and they want to put parking two blocks down for the employees that work there and the people that use the park. And in the wintertime when there's a blizzard, I don't want to walk two blocks to get to work. See, I, I disagree with that philosophy. Like I said, I've been here for 26 years. Stouse says he doesn't believe the town's decision to move the parking to the other side of the street will hurt his business. Instead, give more people access. The developer is going to increase that available parking, 135 more spaces. I would leave this a parking lot, maybe even make that lot a parking lot, and if they want to put apartments, put them in the next block down there where there are more houses and more residential. The town says they are in the planning stages and projects still need approval. Ivan Rodriguez, Denver 7. Today, the University of Colorado broke ground on a brand new building on its Boulder campus. It will connect the Leeds School of Business and the College of Engineering. This new building will include 45,000 square feet of new construction, 29,000 square feet of renovated space. It's a $45 million project expected to open in spring of 2021. The Colorado State Fair is releasing its entertainment schedule. The Beach Boys will headline Thursday, August 29th. Brett Young will headline on Saturday, August 31st, and 38 Special will take the main stage on Sunday, September 1st. Tickets are on sale for fan club members, and they go on sale to the public on Friday. And if you want to buy, you can buy them at coloradostatefair.com. And Garth Brooks is in concert this Saturday with more than 80,000 people expected to attend. And that puts this show in the history books for the most tickets sold for a concert at Mile High Stadium. The sold-out show starts at 7 on Saturday, and if you are headed to the concert, Denver Public Works is urging you to bike, use RTD, or ride shares to help with parking and traffic congestion. It's touted as one of the best airports in the nation. A breeze to get your flight on time. Timely fashion that they get stuff done. Like, it's probably the fastest I got my bag this year. For a pain. I don't like it too much, I guess. It's all right. Tonight, a 360 debate on whether DIA lives up to its best airport title. We're talking with travelers, airport officials, and even the pilots who have to navigate the runways. Well, from a pilot's perspective, we don't get a lot of surprises here. DIA ranked number one airport in the country. There's a commitment to passengers. But not everyone agrees. Frankly, it's a little bit surprising. Multiple perspectives on whether DIA lives up to the hype. Denver 7 goes 360 tonight at 10. It's out with the old and in with the new during the gallery floor sample sale at the showroom. Shop early for the best selection and save 50 to 70% on hundreds of clearance floor models. Find stunning home furnishings from your favorite designers such as Marge Carson, Lexington, Hancock & Moore, and Bernhardt. Renovate and refresh your space for the right price during the gallery floor sample sale. Only at the showroom, Colorado's largest selection of sofas, sectionals, and leather. Wagons Ho. Over 200 years since Lewis and Clark, and yet the packing list remains the same. Bring it all. Jerky, animal feed, assorted hammers. Mm, you did check the tires. The unsung pack mules of the Westward Passage. Huh? Drive them in. Since 1960, you know we've got your back and your front. Pack mules gotta eat. Discount tire.
Let's get you taken care of. I'm attorney Diane Sawaya. Part of our slogan is that we're aggressive, but what does that mean? It means we don't back down. We don't quit fighting until we've gotten the money you deserve. Nearly a quarter billion dollars so far and counting. Call today. Let's talk about your case. Diane Sawaya. Smart. Aggressive. Compassionate. Call 303-758-4777. Turns out you can buy new stuff and sell old stuff at the Mile High Flea Market. Oh, I know. I was brought back so I could be sold again. Something about making extra cash. Well, from the look of it, you won't be back for very long. This guy's got an eye on you. The guy eating turkey legs? Yeah, the guy eating turkey legs. Not that guy. His hands are too full. Buy, sell, and resell at the Mile High Flea Market. Open every weekend. Mile High Flea Market. Home to millions of buyers and sellers since 1976. Hi, I'm Mark Rexa, owner of the Royal Gorge Route Railroad, Colorado's most historic scenic train that travels through the spectacular Royal Gorge. The train travels along the scenic Arkansas River, deep within Colorado's grandest canyon. Here you can experience first-class dining, family fun, and the sort of personal service that reminds you why you love to travel. And the region also offers world-class rafting, an award-winning winery, and a variety of outdoor activities. Book your train adventure today at RoyalGorgeRoute.com. Hey, let's have fun today. Helix Gardens today we play. A season pass means my family can play any day. We love unlimited two parks in one fun. Can't wait to explore the new Meow Wolf's Kaleidoscape ride and get tons of free extras. Wait, there's more time to save. Hurry, buy right now online or at King Supers and save $110 on each pass. Get all the extras and the low price. The price goes up June 10th. Village yeah. Gardens, we love you. Boy, DIA is getting a lot of love lately. Both the Wall Street Journal and Skytrax just named our airport best in the country. The journal's rankings are based on reliability, value, and convenience. Skytrax award is based on how passengers vote. But if you have flown out of DIA recently, you know there are plenty of added headaches right now with all the construction and aging facilities. Now, at the same time, seasoned travelers know it could be worse. So, Denver 7's Jennifer Kovaleski gives us multiple perspectives in tonight's 360 report. Denver International Airport is the fifth busiest in the country. Oh my God, it's like 20th in the world. With a record 65 million passengers flying out last year. This is beautiful. But is it really the best airport in the country? Maybe number one for most friendly people. Uh, you know, maybe everybody's higher. <laughs> Tonight we're going 360 at baggage claim for six perspectives. Hear from a pilot, an international traveler, out-of-state passenger, a first-time flyer at DIA, Colorado traveler with a family, and lastly, the airport itself, who is clearly on Team DIA. There's plenty of space, it doesn't feel claustrophobic, and there is absolutely no trouble getting any service. Hikari Knight travels at least once a month and calls New York City home. If you're traveling abroad at JFK, you may very well have to walk for close to half an hour to get to your gate. Compared to his congested and landlocked airports, DIA is a dream, and he can see why it's been ranked number one. What a wonderful, warm environment. We're hoping when they rebuild LaGuardia, it will be half this nice. We took a momcation. <laughs> All weekend, no kids. This is Nikki Simmons' first time here. What do you think about DIA? Eh, it's here. <laughs> it's not great, but it's not horrible. I've seen worse. She's not sold on this whole number one in the country thing. Here, I don't, I can't get many souvenirs, gifts. I don't see too much of Colorado culture in here. Simmons would like to see more shops and places to buy souvenirs. Oh, and she thinks security could use some help. It's a nice size. Security's kind of slow. I would rate DIA an 8 out of 10. Erin Williams flew in from Mexico City. She's giving her customs experience two thumbs up. We hear a lot about how difficult it is when you're entering the U.S., so um, I didn't feel any of that at all. But what is it like to conquer DIA with little ones in tow? We do like the train. Hold on. For families, everybody likes the train. You get to sit on the front and look at the tunnel. And her proud dad and Colorado resident, Randy Shrouder. He thinks the airport is fine, 
but would like to see more dining options. As for DIA being number one. Frankly, it's a little bit surprising. I don't love the dining options. It feels slightly old. Then there's the bathroom situation. The bathrooms are kind of yucky. Like many travelers. He's hopeful all of this noisy and annoying construction will come with major improvements. Hopefully in the next few years, as we make some updates, we will be, I think, hands down the best. Despite being delayed until 2023 for bad concrete, yeah. Emily Williams with the airport says the redesign of the Great Hall will be worth the wait. We're going to have great new local concession options here in the terminal. And then the passenger experience out of the concourse is going to be so much better, too. We're expanding all three of our concourses. More gates will also mean more food options. She also says they are investing $3.5 to give the airport's aging facilities a much-needed facelift, which includes those yucky bathrooms. Our bathrooms are getting an upgrade, which is very exciting for our passengers. From the airport's point of view, this is why it thinks DIA is getting national and international recognition. There's a commitment to passengers all across the airport. Before you take off with your team, Bring in our pilot's perspective. The flexibility and the efficiency that's offered. Tanya Gatlin is a commercial airline pilot. She says DIA's six runways are a huge benefit. And that leads to less congestion, greater efficiency, and less reduced travel time for passengers because we're not stopping and starting and waiting constantly. The biggest area for improvement, she says, is the need for more gates so passengers aren't stuck as long on the tarmac when they land. But DIA already has that in the works. Gatlin also stands by the rankings. From a pilot's perspective, we don't get a lot of surprises here, and that's that's a very good thing. Whether you're landing or taking off, everyone seems to agree. DIA landing on top is a good thing for a booming state. Jennifer Kowalewski, Denver 7. All right, we want to hear your thoughts on this now, traveling in and out of DIA. Is it the best? Is it the worst? Is it somewhere in between? Email us your thoughts at 360 at the denverchannel.com. Or if you'd like, uh, jump in right now to this very lively conversation going on on the Denver 7 Facebook and Twitter pages. We have a Contact 7 consumer alert tonight. Target is recalling these USB charging cables because of shock and fire hazards. The metal around the cord can shock someone when it's plugged into the wall. And Apple is also recalling these three-prong wall plug adapters in its World Travel Kit. The adapters can break, and the metal prongs can also shock people who touch the plug. Well, another major clinical lab testing data breach, this time from LabCorp. Now, LabCorp says hackers got names, addresses, birthdays, and credit card numbers from 7.7 .7 million customers. Earlier this week, if this sounds familiar, Quest Diagnostic, uh, Diagnostics reported a similar data breach. That one affects 12 million people. Now, the collection company both use is where this breach occurred. And both firms say hackers did not get their hands on lab results. So if you think about what you ate today, chances are plastic wasn't on the menu, but you ingested some because a new study says we eat between 200 and 300 pieces of plastic every day, and we breathe in about the same amount. Scientists analyze common foods and drinks, including seafood, salt, sugar, honey, beer, and water from the tap and bottles, and they found that bottled water is a big culprit. Researchers say people probably consume way more microplastics than this study even shows since it didn't study all foods and drinks. Scientists are still trying to figure out the health impacts of consuming microplastics. Right. So with the wet weather pattern, you might want to keep a close eye on your dog's health right now because our afternoon storms are leaving behind puddles full of bacteria and even parasites. The dogs are more susceptible than other pets because they're outdoors more often, so they have a higher chance of contracting lepto or giardia. Now, lepto is caused by bacteria, giardia by a parasite. And both are treatable, and dogs usually make a full recovery. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> yes, Trail Ridge Road is open for the season. Just know that there's a warning. Rocky Mountain National Park says drivers need to be ready for icy conditions as snow melts and then refreezes on the road. And if weather conditions take a turn for the worse, there could be nightly closures. The Trail Ridge Store and Alpine Visitor Center are both expected to open this weekend. Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson joins us now. Um, boy. It's nice that this warm weather has settled in so nicely. It finally has finally. arrived. And with time, that comes yeah. the uh, afternoon dose of clouds and scattered showers, thunderstorms. Check out this time lapse. This was started at about uh, 2 o'clock this afternoon. The clouds building. This view looking to the west in the Denver area. A little bit later, it looked more like this in Denver as the thunderstorm activity moved through. These were not severe today, but a little bit of lightning and some brief downpours. Some of the heavier rain fell down over the Sangre de Cristo Mountains where it had some flash flood warnings in effect. For tomorrow, I think we'll see a similar.